Hello everyone, I hope you're doing fine. My name is Skyline, and joining me today in spirit is Evie for this in-depth mercy guide. He had a lot of say in what went into the video, and parts of it are even directly scripted and quoted by him. Of course, I play Mercy at a GM level myself, so you can be sure that this is the most well-informed Mercy guide on the web. So let's start with her abilities. Most of this video will be about her abilities, more so than other heroes, because optimizing and exploiting the way her skills work is the key to pushing a traditionally, you know, no skill, easy hero to that high level. You don't have to focus on aim or anything like that, so why not use your attention to really grind the most out of these skills? First up is, of course, the staff, your main weapon. It heals and it damage boosts. Cool, cool, we knew that. But just to be thorough, it does heal for 60 health per second and it damage boosts for 30%. 60 health per second is a strong heal relative to other abilities in the game, but I think that the 30% damage boost is even stronger in comparison. Nothing else really gives that on-demand damage boost like that at any time. That's normally reserved for ultimates. So we want to get the most out of damage boost, but we're a healer, which means we have to do the whole healing thing, which can get in the way, right? Well, with perfect mastery, you can actually do both 100% at the same time. You can damage boost without sacrificing healing and vice versa. Let me show you. One of the key mechanics we can exploit on the damage boost is that it takes effect when an ability hits not when it is fired. So taking the popular example of Farah, she can launch a rocket and it can go soaring through the air for a couple seconds, but you only need to be damage boosting in that one instant that the rocket hits, no more. Farah is a great hero to damage boost, by the way, because the 30% increase lets her hit over a breakpoint, lets her hit over 150, and that allows her to one-shot Tracer and it allows her to one-shot 200 health heroes who have just taken a little bit of damage. Always try to find damage boosts that will go over some sort of damage breakpoint. For example, a McCree who's out of range normally can't kill people in two hits, but with a mercy boost, he can. Things like that. Anyway, take a look at this. I'm just sitting around doing nothing while Farah launches the rocket, and here I damage boost at the last second. You can tell it worked because Tracer was killed in one hit. Here's an example of healing in between. And you can see how I'm effectively damage boosting and healing the Pharah at the same time and getting practically full benefit from both. You can do this with any hero, some more than others obviously, and I recommend you not be lazy with your damage boost. Use it as technically correctly as you can at all times, like I show you here, and you will improve. If you don't, you won't improve. Actually, on that topic, Eevee makes a great point. Let me quote him here. Just because you've ridden a bike hundreds of times doesn't mean you know how to ride a bike like a pro does. This is how Learning Mercy works. You can play her for literally thousands of hours and not learn a thing. I know many players with 500 hours on Mercy, but play her the exact same way they did only 20 hours in. And that is so, so true. It's easy to get into a flow playing Mercy because most of what you do will be good enough, even without pushing the limits. She's just kind of designed like that. Like with the Twitch damage boosting thing. You don't have to do it, you can just leave that blue beam on the entire time and be lazy, but you have to go against that flow. You have to go for all those small mechanical optimizations to truly become a great Mercy player. It doesn't eventually just come like AIM does for a lot of people after just enough raw hours. Eventually, your brain will just get it, right? You have to actively pursue it. A lot of the things in this guide will seem like small, trivial optimizations, but added up, it's like night in day. So on that note, let's continue exploiting Mercy's staff. Mercy's beam actually sticks on people after she loses line of sight or she goes out of range. You'll find different numbers everywhere, but I timed it myself and it seems to be about one and a half seconds. That's really not too bad. Zenyatta's orbs only stick for three seconds, so in that context, Mercy's beam stays on for quite a long time after she's lost line of sight. This allows you to do all sorts of crazy tricks. You can heal people from completely behind cover, literally, like through a wall, 100%. You can pocket a Farah while not actually flying around with her up in the air. You can stand way back and heal people well outside of your normal 15 meter range. Always try to find ways to exploit this. You should feel awkward if you're just sitting around, leaving a beam on someone out in the open, and you're not, you know, strafing back and forth between a wall or something. Always find ways to heal people from behind cover or at extended ranges 
if it makes you safer, which it almost always does. Speaking of sitting around, you should never be doing that either. And I don't mean the emote, I mean standing still, right? Normally spamming random directions is not actually that great on other heroes, especially jumping, because it makes you more predictable. You should take deliberate, calculated movements on most heroes, but not with Mercy. Mercy is completely different. With Mercy, you can jump and you can do whatever you want, because of Guardian Angel, an ability with both an active and a passive component. The passive is very simple. You hold, jump down, and you glide slowly to the ground instead of just falling. Very simple, but this actually is really big. It's bigger than you might think. It allows Mercy to spam jump without any of the normal repercussions. It allows you to change your jump trajectory on the fly and randomly. Other heroes can't do that. Once you jump, you're kind of locked into one trajectory. So your opponents will never be able to exploit that if you're playing Mercy. So spam away, spammers. You can finally jump around all game without me scolding you. Huh, look at that. Actually, if you love spamming in general, Mercy is seriously your hero, let me tell you, because the active component is just as spammable. You know it, press shift and you fly to a teammate. Nice, great, we know that. We also saw how you can use the fact that the healing beam sticks on for a second and a half to use Guardian Angel to cycle in and out of range. Cool, we went over that too. But there is more, there is more. We're in an, we're in an infomercial now, guys. There is more and you never know it by just playing Mercy. Guardian Angel warps your hitbox and depending on the angle you get and how quickly you release the button, Oh, we'll get to the Mercy Specifics controls in a bit, by the way. Your hitbox can get really weird, especially from a sideways perspective. Even if you don't really have anywhere to go, combining crouching with gliding and tapping shift when people are trying to shoot you basically makes you this weird spaghetti monster hitbox that just makes absolutely no sense, and it makes you really hard to hit. So like I said before, we need to go over the Mercy Specific control settings because it's a big part of using Guardian Angel. First, Toggle Guardian Angel. This needs to be off 100%, which allows you, uh, because this setting, if you turn it off, it allows you to simply tap shift really fast for like a micro dash, I'll call it, which has a lot of great properties like I just went over. You can also do a micro dash into like a bunny hop with increased momentum if you have the correct timing, but that's getting a bit too deep. Let's uh, just keep moving on so this guide isn't four hours long, there will most likely be more Mercy content in the future for the really nitty gritty stuff like that. Anyway, next up, you get to pick a side. Every entertaining video needs some drama, and this one is no exception. When making this guide, there is one thing Evie and I could not agree with, just one thing, and that is this setting. Guardian Angel prefers beam target. If this setting is on, you will dash to whoever your beam is tethered to, no matter what. Even if you aren't looking at them, even if you're looking at someone else, even if they're out of line of sight and the dash would normally be impossible, you can dash to them. Turning it off lets you dash to anyone you're looking at regardless of who your staff is tethered to. I'll first give Evie's answer and then mine because I think they're equally well reasoned. And you guys can come to a decision yourself down in the comments below. Evie has this setting off. Why? Well, quite simply, it gives you more freedom. If you're attached to somebody, you can easily fly to somebody else, no problem. Now yes, you could simply disconnect the staff and fly to anyone anyway, even with the setting turned on, but remember that the beam sticks for a second and a half. If you don't have to turn the beam off, that means you can continue healing someone as you dash away from them, increasing your turnover time and letting you move around more without worrying about sacrificing healing. That's a great argument, legitimately, but I still have the setting on. Here's why. As I explained before, with prefer beam target on, you can execute dashes that would normally be literally impossible. You can actually add functionality to the dash because you can exploit line of sight and still have full guardian angel functionality. Of course, this comes with the trade-off of not being able to heal while you dash away because you're forced to disconnect your beam if you want to fly to a different target. But, as I said before, we want to push Mercy to her absolute limits, and with perfect mechanics, you actually don't lose out on any healing. If you're quick, you can untether your beam, dash to a different target, turn 180 degrees, and reapply your beam within only a few milliseconds, meaning you lose very little healing, as I'm demonstrating right here. Essentially, you gain a huge buff to Guardian Angel, 
while losing practically nothing, as long as your mechanics are up to snuff. Of course, there is still a downside. All that turning and flicking will hinder your vision, but I believe with perfect execution and a lot of practice, preferred beam target on increases Mercy's potential impact and skill caps. Can that ever be consistent enough to be viable? Well, I gave you both arguments. This one is for you to decide. Be your own person for once. I'm just kidding. Anyway, all right. Last ability now, and probably the simplest to talk about. It'll be quick. The pistol. This thing is kind of a noob trap 90% of the time. Whenever the pistol looks like a good option, it's probably not. That's because you have to factor in a lot of stuff. You have to factor in how much damage you could be providing with damage boost, and how much safer it is to exploit line of sight with the beam versus shooting people directly with the gun. You also have to factor in that if you suddenly need to heal someone, the swap time is very relevant. You lose almost 100 healing from the time it takes to swap out to the pistol to the staff, and that could very easily and often mean life or death for your teammates. So taking all those terrible bad factors into account, I won't tell you to never use your pistol because that's not true, but if you're watching this guide, I'm telling you that you aren't good enough to decide when to use the pistol. Even I get it wrong almost all the time. Even Evie doesn't feel comfortable taking out the pistol very often. So it might be best to just for now not use it while you're learning. There are a couple simple exceptions though, of course, and those are very, very easy to recognize, not complicated at all. First, if you are alone with a flanker, that should be obvious. Shoot to kill. It was self-defense, Judge. I swear. The other scenario is if your entire team is dead and you're at like 95% ultimate, oh, 95% popping out your pistol and hitting a couple shots will give you enough charge to get that resurrect off. Notice in both of those cases, both of those scenarios, it's you have no teammates around. So there you go. All right, now on to the big Bambino, the chocolatey center, the thing that everyone screams at you to do every fight as Mercy Resurrect. In general, Evie and I both think that most Mercies hold their Resurrect for too long. It's frequently a good idea to res just one person or two. Of course, not always, but in general. If someone like your Zarya with ultimate dies, that should be an instant res. If your Reinhardt gets picked off early, if your solo DPS soldier dies, those are all pretty good cases where you should just slam that Q key. No problem. But sometimes, heroes die who just aren't that important. <laughs> I know that sounds bad. Like, let's say the fight starts and your Lucio, who's already used his amp it up, dies. That's fine. Wait until more important heroes die. That's really not a problem. Identify the key heroes on your team, and ideally, they should be rezzed when they die. Oftentimes, doing this will prevent your team from losing in the first place, so you won't even need that five-man Reddit res. I have team composition videos that should help you identify those important heroes if you want to go check those out on the channel. But there are times when you do go for that big five-man res. When? Well, usually when you're going into a fight against a big wombo ultimate combo that you know is coming. Like, if you know they have a Zarya and a Hanzo ult available. These are basically guaranteed team wipes, and resing one person usually won't change that. So, you should wait to counter res after the wombo combo. This obviously means that you should hide. A big part of skill with Mercy is keeping track of enemy ultimates, so you know which fights are likely to be instant team wipes and which ones will be a bit grindier. Those grindier fights should heavily favor solo or duo resurrects, and those big ultimate heavy fights against combo teams should favor hiding and doing 4-5 to five man reses. One rule I will impose upon you to never do is what I call a respawn res. These are different from tempo reses, on attack, which I'll get into in a second. An example of a respawn res, and I don't know, whatever you want to call it, that's what I call it, there's no term, would be like if your team is trying to approach the point on Temple of Anubis, for example, and the enemy widow picks someone off right before the fight, resurrecting them gives you no value because there's no fight going on, nothing really happening, you're just approaching them. There's no value except you just gained a little bit of extra time on the clock, accelerating their respawn, essentially. Only do these if you absolutely need to. Like, if there are only five seconds left in the round and you need to fight now, that guy needs to be up now. A tempo res is different. 
a tempo res in solo queue. I'm going to talk about solo queue. It's a little bit different in, uh, in organized play, right? But a tempo res in solo queue is best used on payload maps to make sure your attacking team doesn't lose the cart. If your team won a fight on the cart, but two people died, the defenders can just respawn and take it back 6v4. That's, not, that's no good. If you resurrect those two people after the fight, though, you maintain your tempo and you prevent the other team from getting free ground and territory while your, two, uh, while your two teammates were dead. Basically, when you res, you should always have some sort of goal in mind. You should always have some other function besides just go get them up faster. You should have a goal in your head like, this will help us win the team fight, or this will let us keep the high ground, or this will help us keep the cart, something like that. That's all for the abilities, and you should have a good idea of how to play Mercy now, I think, but I'll leave you with two bits of wisdom from EV. Firstly, pocketing isn't really a thing, and I agree. Pocketing is a term that means you specifically support one player on your team over anyone else. This doesn't really make sense, considering how dynamic and free-flowing Mercy is. She can basically heal and damage boost anyone at any time and instantly dash across the battlefield. I've demonstrated how you can damage boost Pharah while doing other things, for example, so certainly prioritizing certain heroes is good, like if your Pharah takes damage and your Roadhog takes damage, you should probably heal the Pharah there, right? But never think of yourself as pocketing anyone. Pocket your entire team and simply make use of good priorities to distribute your support as efficiently as possible at any given moment to whoever needs it. Pocketing is for lazy people, and laziness, like I said before, is the bane of Mercy players. The last tip is the idea of a pendulum mentality. I like that image, actually, because it pretty accurately portrays how Mercy's movement works. You should set yourself up sort of in the middle of at least two people on your team constantly penduluming back and forth between them. If you want to heal someone, dash to them and stop once you're just inside healing range, then dash out. Continue to do this, dash towards someone until you're just within healing range, then dash out. Some people call it pinballing, but penduluming has a pretty good ring to it. This sounds like Mulan, but I think of it as flowing like water. But anyway, that's a whole lot of mercy for one day, I think. If you want to watch Eevee play, he streams every day. I'll link his Twitch below. Go check him out. He also has a whole written guide that went along with this one that goes into some different topics and sometimes more detail than I went over in this video. So if you want the maximum merciness possible, go and read that as well. Expect another truly advanced mercy guide, not like a meme like advanced mercy guide, but like a real actually advanced mercy guide in the future where we go over all of those super mega nit nitty gritty details that I alluded to earlier. Never forget to stay positive and have a great day. Peace out guys. See you soon.